Right, number 14, uh, notice here that I give you a ratio between the width on this one here. We've got a rectangle, its perimeter is 56, and you've got a ratio between the length and the width, and that is a 6 to 1 ratio. So first of all, let's draw ourselves a rectangular picture. And then here's what I want you all to write down here down below. If you have 6 to 1, that's kind of like saying that's the same thing as 6x to 1x here. And what we're going to do here is label our rectangle with those dimensions right there. Because you don't want to just put 6 and 1 because so we got some type of scale that we need to use there. So I'm going to write 6x and 1x. So let's put 6x there, 1x there. Technically, you got another 6x right there and then a 1x right here. And when you're doing a perimeter, perimeter means you need to add up all the sides. All the sides add to 56. So I'm going to write this 6x plus 1x plus 6x plus 1x equals 56. Okay, and then from there, then you can go and combine up your like terms. You got 14x then equals 56. And then we can do some division here. Let me get my calculator. I think that's maybe like four times maybe. Yep, that'll be x is four. Now that's technically not the answer. That is what your scale that you need to, I guess, multiply with right there. So now we're going to go and take the 4 and plug it right back in. 1 times 4 is obviously 4. And then 6 times 4 is going to be 24, I guess. And uh, let's see here. They said that was in inches right there. So you can put inches on both of those, and those would be your dimensions there. That would be the length and then the width. The length is 24. Here, let's label that. The length is 24, and then the width is going to be uh, 4 inches there. You can do the same exact thing here with the area. Uh, it's just a slightly different uh, approach on this one here. It starts the same here. You're going to go 7x to 3x. You're going to draw yourself a rectangle. And uh, 7x, 3x. I guess you can go ahead and put your other 7x and 3x. The difference here is the area is 525. And you got to remember, with area, the spec from middle school, you said was the length times the width. So I'm going to go ahead and write 525. And then that's going to equal the length times the width, 7x and then times 3x. Now, where a lot of people will mess this up here, they'll say it's 21x, but it's really 21x squared. And x times an x is an x squared. Another area I'll see people mess up is they'll try and square root to get rid of the uh, square right there, which you do want to do eventually. But first, we want to get rid of this coefficient out in front. And it'll actually clean this up and make it much better. Uh, if you divide you know, the 525 by 21, I think it's uh, 25. Let me double check. 21. Yep, that'll be x is 20, or I'm sorry, x squared is 25. And then you can square root both sides and you can get that x is 5. And just like the last one, x equals 5, that's actually not the answer. you got to go plug right back in. Okay, so the uh, length and the width, the length is 7 times, I guess, the 5, which will be 35. 35, what are we in? Centimeters. And then the 3 times the 5 right there, that'll be 15 centimeters. And then if you want to just double check, you can go and do 35 times 15 and that does come back out to 525 so there's your length and there's your width okay. you can do the same exact thing here with angles we got two of these problems here so when you got the angles here you got to use the fact that hey you got a triangle um, and you can go label the angles like this 7x 6x 5x right there. So just you know put an x next to all of these guys. You gotta have that same ratio. And then I want you to use the fact that all angles in a triangle need to add up to 180. So you can write it like that right there. Okay, and I know 5x and 6x, it's 11x. 11x plus 7x is 18x. Then equals 180. And then let's go ahead and divide. That's x is 10. And once you get x is 10, then you can go plug right back into all of these guys. 
So the angles, um, they didn't give us a specific order. So 5 times 10 is 50 degrees, 60 degrees, 70 degrees. And that's your answer there. So um, you might have been able to use a little bit of intuition there, but um, you know that's going to be the best way there to set those up. Make another triangle here. I'm just kind of making this up. So I need 7 times 1 angle, 14 times 1 angle, 15 times 1 angle. And like before, all of these need to add up to 180. Okay, um, let's see here. 7 and 14 is 21. And then plus 15, what is that? 36x, I guess. Equals 180. And I think maybe 5 times. Let's see here. 180 divided by 36. Yep, x will be 5. And then once you get x is 5, then you can go plug those back in to get your answers here. Uh, let's see here. 7 times 5 right there, that would be 35 degrees. Uh, 14 times 5. Go ahead and just use my calculator on that. 14 times 5, 70 degrees. And then I think the last one will be 75 degrees right there. Or actually, hang on. Let me make sure. Yep, 75. So that'll be it there on those. So those ratio problems, a little bit weird. Might not have seen a ton of those uh, quite yet. So, All right, uh, next one here, you got some proportions. Uh, you'll set up a lot of proportions here, but these here are just going to focus on just the solving. They're already set up for you. And we do this here with cross multiplying, right? We do these two things equals those two things right there. So uh, 4 times 15. Now, if you want to just write this out for the first one, you can write that. And then, of course, 5 times x right there. Uh, 4 times 15 is 60, and then equals 5x. And then I guess we can divide, and that's x is uh, 12 right there. Okay. Uh, next one here, you can go and take these two right here, 2, and then n plus 5, and then 3, and then n plus 1. Uh, the big thing with this one here is make sure you put the parentheses there on those because uh, you're going to want to eventually distribute. So what is this? 2n plus 10, 3n plus 3. And we could subtract the 2n from both sides and get m. And then we could subtract 3 from both sides and get m is 7. And that'll be good there. Moving along. Uh, last one, kind of the same thing. We'll need some parentheses here. We'll go two times all of that, five times all of this. So two times 3k minus 4, five times k minus 1, and then you got some more distributive property going on here. 6k uh, minus 8, and then 5k minus 5. Okay, subtract 5k and then add the 8 and you get k is equal to 3. And that'll be it. Okay, uh, I guess I've already kind of spoiled the thing here about geometric mean. Uh, this is something you're going to want to study and memorize right here. But the geometric mean, there's kind of two different ways you can think about it. Both are the same processes in, in a way here. You can set it up as a proportion, but then you're going to cross multiply and that would be 8 times b and then to get rid of the x squared piece, you'll square root both sides. So like on this first one here, you can write it like this, it's 2 and then over x and then x over 8. And then when you cross multiply, x times x is x squared, 2 times 8 is 16. And then you will do the square root of both sides, which, you know, so it's the square root of, you know, 2 times 6 or 2 times 8 right there, which is 16. And then that's going to come out to 4. Some will come out real nice. Some of them you'll need to do simplest radical form. So let's try out this next one here. You got 3 and 9. So let's go, uh, whoops, let's go 3 to x and then x to 9. It's going to get us x squared. It's 27. And then you can square root both sides. And then that'll be 3, 9, 3, 3. That'll be it right there. 
Um, make sure you pull out pairs out of the radical, and then you'll be set up for success there. All right, let's do next one here. Uh, 8 and 16, so we'll go 8 to x. All right, here, you know what? Let's do it this way here, just so you all see the other method. It just said square root. Both of these multiply together, just like that there. Um, let me go ahead and multiply 8 times 16, just in case that's a perfect square. 8 times 16, 128. Uh, I believe 128 is not a perfect square, so we would need to go and do simplest radical form. And guess what here on this? You could go and say, hey, that's 8 and 16. 16, you could say, is 4 and 4. Uh, if you, well, eh, I'll, I'll probably skip this trick. There's a little trick you can do there, but uh, you got two pairs of two, two pairs of two right there. That's two times two. Uh, the four, oh, I'm sorry, the eight, you got the four and the two and then another pair of twos. So what this is going to be is two times two times two and then square root of this one, two left over. You don't use any of the numbers you broke down. So this will be eight square root of two. For that one. And then I'll get you this problem here in the simplest radical form. Okay, let's try that next one there. Same thing here. We'll go square root of 10 times 12. Um, that's going to be square root of 120. Then we'll break down. If you're looking for numbers, once again, that multiply to 10 and 12, use the numbers that you started with. 10 and 12, right? Say that's 5 and 2. Uh, you could say this is 2, 6. You could say 3, 2. Got a pair of twos. I uh, don't have a pair of anything else. So you're going to take all these guys here and multiply them back together. 5 times 3 is 15. 15 times 2 is 30. So shut that as 2 square root of 30. And that'll be it.